Hi again, it's Laura, and thanks for logging back in for another video. I'm so glad that you guys keep checking out my videos, and I want to talk about a topic that's kind of new to dental offices. Um, it is, um, I'm sure it's been around for a long time, but not necessarily implemented really well. And I want to talk about kind of the importance of it and the suggestions of how to implement it. So do you want to know what it is? Um, checklist or check sheets. And I'm not the only one that teaches this, but there's a lot of trainers and consultants and speakers out there who talk about the importance of checklists, you know, check sheets, whatever you want to call it. Making sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing with their jobs. And I like them also when it comes to training, making sure that we're training the employees on everything they need to know when they start. So let me break down what it is first. Basically a checklist or a check sheet is a list of everything that either needs to happen, needs to get done, you know, and it could be for everything. It could be for setting up a room. This is how we set up a room. Answering the phone. This is how we answer the phone. Training a new employee. These are the things that this new employee needs to learn. Um, managing the practice. I need to walk around and make sure these things, I check all these things off. So it's a list for anything. It's a list to make sure we don't forget um, things that are supposed to be done. Now, it is time consuming to build one. And I hear a lot of people push back on them because it's kind of like, I know how to do my job. I don't need a checklist. I remember everything, which is great. I think that's awesome. The checklist isn't to make sure you're proving you know how to do your job. The checklist is developed so that we don't forget anything. And the next time we go to show somebody how to do something or train somebody, we have a list that we can follow and it's all organized. So what I mean by that is when we, let's say when it's, um, how do we go through steriliza sterilizing instruments, right? What's the process? We can develop a checklist where it's like check one, two, three, four, five, and it can be posted somewhere. And it's our checks and balances, no pun intended, to make sure all the steps are being followed. Because what I find a lot of times when we ask an employee why they didn't do something or where they, why they dropped the ball on something is a lot of times they say they didn't know it was supposed to be done. So I can now give them a checklist and say, here are the steps that you need to do to do this thing, right? There's no question. Now, does it take a lot of time to develop a checklist? It, and initially it does, right? In the sense that you have to go through, if I'm sitting down and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make a checklist of how to submit insurance claims. Here's my steps. I have to actually do it, write it, do it, write it, do it, write it, right? So it does take a little bit more time initially, but my gosh, does it save time later. So if I've made a checklist and now somebody sits down and I'm gonna train them on how to do this thing in our office, all I have to do is give them this checklist and then they can follow along and follow the notes and write notes on there and we can make sure we don't drop the ball on teaching them anything. So it's a really good way to save time down the road. Now, I don't suggest you go into your practice and write check sheets for everything right now all the time. I think you should pick one or two things that every employee does and they should write a check sheet for it. So have your scheduler write down the steps that, you know, the, that they follow when it goes to filling a last minute cancellation. Have your assistant write a check sheet for supply ordering. Um, have your hygienist write a check sheet this week for you know how they turn over rooms, okay? Whatever it is each employee does, have them write one check sheet. Then put that in a file and then the next week, have them pick another task, have them pick another topic. Because if you just start the process of doing this, then it's gonna become part of your everyday process and the next time somebody needs to know how to do something, you're just gonna be able to go to that check sheet and say, okay, here are the steps that you need to follow or here's the way I need to teach you on this topic. So you'll hear a lot about check sheets from my training, from Front Office Rocks, from other, um, other training sources out there and you probably hear it in training and go back to the office on Monday and go, yep, yeah, that sounded really good but we don't have time to do it. If you teach your team the importance of them, if you teach them why they that we wanna do this, and then you have everybody just pick one and you make it a three or six month process, 
before you know it, you'll look back six months later and you'll have, you'll have everything outlined for all the steps of the things that you need to do. And I'm telling you, if you take the time to do this, it's going to save you time in the long run. And then if something changes, if a process changes, you just go in and change the update, the check sheet. And now anybody going forward will know how to get something done the right way. So that's my two cents on that. I know I hear a lot of people talking about like, well, can I just buy it? Can I just buy a check sheet? Can I just buy a manual? Sure, you can buy something, but it's never gonna be used because it's not gonna be fit for your practice. It's not gonna be the way you want it done in your office. So it's better to develop these things in house so that your team can document everything that's the way it's supposed to be done in your practice then keep it a live document, keep it somewhere where it can be changed and updated. So as things change and grow in your practice, you can update your check sheets. So that's my thoughts on check sheets. If you've looked to try to get your office organized, if you're trying to improve systems in your office, you've got to document it. The best people to do the documentation are the people who do the job in your practice. So have everybody tackle one a week. And before you know it, you'll have everything documented the way you want things done at your office. So one tip for dental practice management improvement. I'm Laura again from Front Office Rocks. We can help you. We actually have some starting check sheets for the teams that they can take and make their own. So we have that available to clients. And then subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you on the next video. Have an amazing day.